Greetings fellow Demon Slayers, this is Timon and Mari here today with another Week of Maidens video. And for today I just want to go over kind of like currency management, like where should you be spending your gold, where should you be spending your shards. I do hear the new update is incoming, so when that comes out I'm going to grab the new mermaid skin or whatever this is I'm hearing about and show that off. So yeah, I'm super hype and we'll look at what they add to the game. But for now, yeah, let's talk about what you should and shouldn't do. So the first things I want to look at are like these guys, this, this, what are they, headgear vendor, this choker vendor, then we'll like come across the way we have a cape vendor and a gun skin vendor. Yeah, don't waste your shards here. Like as far as the gun skins, they can drop from your, your little like roulette reward that we get every 15 minutes. I can't remember what the time step reward. So, like, there's no reason to, like, burn shards for gun skins, unless you're, like, really desperate or swimming in them in-game. And the same thing goes for, like, the cape vendor. I personally don't like capes because they, they cover all that. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. The choker vendor, again, there's only three chokers in the game, and I've never brought one from this guy. And I'm, I'm literally only missing one just from, like, playing the game for a while. So, I wouldn't spend shards on these. And the same thing goes for headgear. Like, headgear, like, to me is in a weird place. Like, you can obviously, like, move, move it around on your character. But a lot of it seems to clip in really, really bad ways. So, it requires, like, a little bit of scaling and messing with to really get it looking right on your character. And, again, you get so many of them for, like, free just from doing your daily logins and getting them that way. Or from time step rewards that it doesn't warrant spending 10k shards on them so moving on from these guys who are out to steal your shards this vendor the eco's gear shop again like don't waste your gold here 200k gold is like literally a skill i think it's a skill up when you're starting out or you could like purchase some skills that are within your class for 200k gold like at least one so i wouldn't like come here like honestly when i started the game i just went without on my tank like, I needed a pendant for, like, the longest time. Like, I think I got my first pendant at, like, 90 hours of playtime. But, like, to me, not having a pendant was better than coming here and buying a white one with potentially crappy stats. So, yeah, like, just don't bother with this. It's 200k gold. It's just too much for a piece of white gear that you're going to ultimately upgrade out of anyway. I'd go without and, like, use the gold towards skill-ups. Moving on, we're going to come to Eco's General Shop. Now, this is like my mainstay. Like, this is where most of my gold goes, besides skill-ups. So, like, I always like to keep uh, all of these consumables on me. So, I always keep HP potions, HP flask, and then shield potion, shield flask, and then stamina potion and stamina flask on my character. The reason being is like they're just overall helpful. They may not seem too useful like at first, but you know, maybe you're playing on like a higher difficulty later and something hits you or you get caught in a sticky situation and you make it out of the fight, you can HP flask yourself and bam, you're back at full health and you don't have to sit around waiting for regen. Or if you play on ultra hardcore, you won't have any regen anyway, in which case these become even more valuable. Next we look at the shield potion and shield flask again. Like I think this is the most OP item in the game because it effectively gives you two life bars. And as long as you remember to let your wife who take a drink before entering combat, you're you're going to be damn near unkillable. Like it's such a good item. It's so useful. There's no reason to not invest in these. Like and then the same thing goes for stamina potion and stamina flask just because there is a limit on how long we can fly. And if you want to do like something like run routes and uh, the desert are in Freedom City, then you can just simply pop a stamina flask and you have two minutes of free flight time where you're not constantly having to land in between like a baby bird who's just learning to take off. So I definitely say like me personally, like I have like a minimal rule of like I keep 20 of these on like each like 20 of each of these on a character. But even then, like that's even getting out of hand. I think I have like 50 plus of these on my character right now because whenever I think about them, I just simply buy a bunch because they're so useful. I don't ever want to go without them. Beauty tickets are useful if you don't have Maiden Plus because then it will allow you to edit your character after she's been awakened. If you have Maiden Plus, this item is effectively useless. You don't need to buy it. 
time tickets are useful when the daily pops up. Otherwise, like, if you're Guardian level 15, then you really have no reason to go into that little mission mode. But if the daily pops up and it says to use a time ticket and you don't have one on you, yeah, just grab one for a thousand, use it, finish the daily, go on with your life. Range tickets also, they're only really useful if there's a daily up. And again, if you have Maiden Plus, you don't even need to use range tickets to use the gun range. So these are only for free-to-play players, and even then they're only 200 gold, they're so cheap, they're kind of a negligible cost. So if you have a daily for shooting at the gun range, just grab these. Death contracts, I don't tend to buy because, like, I mean, I don't die enough that I've used the ones up that I have. Then they tend to just kind of drop randomly here and there. Like, I've seen them when I pop totems. So, I wouldn't really, like, buy death contracts unless you're, like, really, really desperate and you don't play on hardcore. And you've been dying, then, yeah, keep them on you so you can continue the run. But otherwise, like, if you're playing hardcore and you're in at end game and you're not really dying anymore, you probably have these sitting around and don't have a use for them. Cheap feed and quality feed, or I, I mean mostly quality feed, not cheap feed. But quality feed and up, I believe it's premium feed. These are worth buying. You can buy the premium feed from the vendor on the island area. I, I cannot remember the name of it right now, but basically where the Ascension Gear vendor is, there is a food vendor for pets, and he does have the premium feed. But either quality or premium will do if you have a pet. If you do not have a pet, for auto looting, then you do not need to worry about keeping these items because your pet will never get hungry if you don't have one. And as far as fishing items, of course they're worth it if you want to be fishing. I'd stick with the 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 quality bait for obvious reasons as opposed to the cheap bait. And then finally we have Pharaoh Essence. This is another thing I don't leave without. Definitely worth investing your gold in these, especially if you're farming roots. It'll just make the enemies respawn 50% faster, which is overall worth it for your time spent. So, that's it for all the downstairs vendors. We're going to come up here and look at the final vendor, and that'll be the video. So let me just get over to her. I believe this is Akko, if I remember correctly. We have like Eco, Iko, and Akko. Yeah, this one's Akko. So there's an issue with her, like, where if you haven't done your gun range daily, she won't sell you anything that she gives out. But you can find these vendors on the map. There, there is one in Freedom City, and there is one in the desert. So it's not, like, a huge detriment. Like, if you want to hit up a rare item shop, you don't have to go to her. You can do it on the fi in the field as well. So as far as what I buy from her, definitely experience tickets, always. Keys, like, you can if you open your crates, but, like... Full disclosure, like, if you look at my my crates here, like, I haven't opened crates in so damn long. Like, I have 66 of these, 60 of these. Like, I might just do a crate opening video just to see what these things yield, because I just personally don't pop them open. Like, they just kind of sit there. But I will say this, if you are looking to open crates, doing it via keys is actually less shards than opening them with, sh than opening them with shards. So if you want to do a crate opening, buy up a bunch of keys because it will ultimately cost you less shards in the long run. Looking at the spin ticket, you don't really need to buy these. You'll get them from gameplay and the game gives you a spin or gives you two spins every 15 minutes on the time step. So this is a waste of shards in my opinion. Rabbit's tails are never a waste. I keep them around, especially for strategies like one-shotting Union or burning Union down. Giving yourself that extra 25% crit is just, it's overall useful. So it's an item that I, I like to keep on my person. We've already spoken about death contracts. The, the portable grinder and the portable forge are also useful. There was a code going around for these. I don't know if it's expired or not. I don't even remember the name of the code. Like, honestly, I, I, so... But there were for, for codes. If you look them, guys, up, look them up, they're easy to find. Or if you ask in chat, everyone will tell you. Once that code has been exhausted for each of these items, then you will have to buy them. I believe they cost 5,000 shards each, if I'm remembering correctly. They're still worth it, just so you can do your forging and your grinding on your person. You don't have to actually seek out the one in the desert or the one in the, in the city. 
So these these I say like unless you die on hardcore, you'll never lose them. So once you have it, it's always going to be in your inventory. Just be sure when you do get your hands on it to actually take the time and level them up cuz well not the forge, but the grinder specifically. As you can see this is level 5. This max key here before it is level 5 will give you the option to level it and I think it costs like 100k golden upgrade. Maybe I'm remembering wrong, but I'm sure someone will correct me. But basically what leveling this thing up does is it will yield you more rewards the higher the level. So for example, if I go for dark cubes and I break this T2 ring I don't care about, it gives me five T2 dark cubes instead of one. And that applies for everything, like you get more gold and you would get five light cubes instead of one for breaking items. So it's definitely like worthwhile to level up your grinder and it's worthwhile to have a forge so you can upgrade your gear anytime. Going back to the vendor, we'll look at the last few things, which is just going to be the death invitations. All of these are always worth it, simply because putting death invitations on your character, like feeding them to her, will increase the power of strongholds, which will in turn yield more shards. So to put that in perspective, if you're in Freedom City and you spend 21 death invitations, which would be 1,050, if I'm doing my math right, and you go run through that stronghold, you're going to get like 5 to 6k shards every 5 minutes. So yeah, that's you're, it's literally like it pays for itself. So never be shy about this. If you're running low on death invitations, like come here and just burn your shards, but just make sure that you do the farming to get them back. Like don't buy the death invitations and then just let them sit in your inventory. Actually use them and burn through some strongholds and you'll end up with a nice clump of shards on you. Respect tickets are worth it if you screw up somehow when you're doing your your interim levels, but again, like these are something that are so common that you'll never need to buy them. Like, I, I always have them on my person. I've never brought one. So, the last two things I want to look at are the skill screen and then the battle pass. So, coming to the skill screen, we're going to go to a skill I don't have done. Let's go to this AR. Okay. I can't look at that. Okay. Something that's, like, upgradable that I have. You know what? I'll just buy Sonic Blade, whatever. Unlock. Actually, this works. So, when you... You know what? It doesn't work. <laughs> Here we go. I, I need to actually be looking at the craft screen to show you what I mean. Alright, so when you're going to upgrade a skill, you can either spend shards, gold, or crafting tickets. Crafting tickets are always the way to go if you have them, but obviously try to use them when the skill gets to be really high level. Outside of that, you should always be using gold. Just simply because shards are too valuable to use here. Like there are so many other places that you can spend shards. Such as like at a rare item vendor. Or on your battle pass which we'll get into next. So my priority line is if I'm going to upgrade a skill. Gold is the go to currency unless I have tickets. And again like you don't want to just burn tickets like this skill is say level 1. So I would want to use the gold here. But if I come to a higher level skill. Like, say, this circle, I won't be able to pull up the upgrade screen because, like, I don't have the items for it. But this is going to cost, like, way more gold, like, maybe closer to, like, two, 300k, maybe more. This is where you'd want to use a crafting ticket on a high-level skill just to dodge that gold, gold cost. So I hope that helps people out because I, I get, like, a lot of DMs about this game where they're just asking me, like, you know... Should I use, you know, my shards? Should I use gold? Or should I use a ticket? Like, obviously the ticket is the best choice, but for high level skills, when you're leveling the skill up in the interim, spend gold. Like, even if you're a new player, like, yes, yeah, skills will eat away at your gold. Don't feel bad if you're broke, because I was broke for a time. But once you get your character leveled up enough that she can farm, like, at least mythic strongholds like they don't even have to be like plus 21 like you could just do like the plus 15 minimum in fc as long as you can do that then you'll make enough gold to level your character and you won't have to worry about it like crafting tickets or not but again like do not spend shards here that they're not worth it i definitely don't suggest that so let's get out of this screen and hit up the final screen which is the battle pass so I have the whole battle pass done, 
But this is really like your your big shard dump. The reason being is these are timed exclusives. So the goal of most players, especially new players starting now, is to try and like get to the end of the story, which the game will pretty much prompt you as you play. You just want to finish the main quest. And once you're done with the main quest, you will unlock access to this pass. Honestly, I didn't really spend any shards like while playing through the game because I knew I was going to want to get everything here. And when I got through main story, I was able to get the first two steps and then the rest I had to kind of farm for. You can use premium currency to kind of ease the blow of how much it cost. But I understand most people won't do that. So just keep in mind, like I think it came to a total of 800k shards. If I'm remembering correctly, I think it is 100k shards per step. Again, I'm sure someone will correct me because I, I can't see the prices anymore since I have it all brought. But at 100k shards per step, yeah, it's a bit of a grind. Like it took me like maybe like a week and a half of solid grind after finishing the game and it can go faster like it just depends on how much you play like i play like maybe a few hours a day to avoid burnout and with the discount using the premium currency i don't remember how much premium currency it is to get the discount but that would bring the shard cost down to half which is 50k which would make the total package a cost of 400k if you pay to win your way through it so make sure, like like I said, don't spend your shards on skills. Save them if you're a new player to try to get through this these cosmetics if these things interest you. If they don't interest you, then the only other thing you really have to spend your shards on in this game would be the Ascension Gear vendor on... The, I can't remember the name of the island, so I'll call it Santiago for now. But like, basically, like your Ascension Gear would be your T3 gear, which would be like sets like this like it'll actually be class named so for example because this is the warrior set it's called slayer helmet now keep keep in mind i've done a video on ascension gear before i think i'll drop it in the description just in case people haven't seen it that the really op set to go for would be the warrior set just because it gives the most valuable secondary stat which is attack and it gives 84 attack per piece which makes your character just a walking death machine more so than they'd normally be because you can already become pretty powerful. But warriors are just absurdly powerful. They hit like a Mack truck that just drove off the side of the highway. So with that being said, definitely focus warrior gear and even the assassin set is good as long as you stack it up to 100 crit. Because I, that's if crit is a percentage. I've heard some people say 100 crit isn't 100% crit. But that just requires more testing. And I may make an assassin and test it myself. But either way, the assassin set is a good gateway to getting a high critical rate. And the warrior set is a good gateway to getting a high physical attack stat. Both are very valuable sets. Outside of the warrior and the assassin set... Yeah, I wouldn't even bother spending my shards on the other. I hear the tank set makes you borderline immortal. I've, I've heard some people have invested in it. But I'd rather just stack like T2 tank gear with attack on it. And then level it up like via cubes just to get it to T3 and have attack rolls instead of defense rolls. But it's to each his own. The game is a dungeon crawler so everyone's going to build the way they want. I've always liked glass cannons so I'll stick with that playstyle. And with that, that will end the video. I hope it gives people an idea of where to use their currencies. Because, like, I know it can be a bit confusing when you start out. Like, do I use my shards here? Do I use my shards there? The only other thing I want to bring up, because I actually neglected to bring it up, is inventory space. This is a good place to spend your shards. If you're free to play and you don't have, like, the storage package, yeah, this is a safe buy for shards. Like, spending 50k shards here doesn't hurt. Because the only option for free-to-play would be shards. So, sorry I forgot to mention that, but yes, inventory space is safe to buy if you're 100% free-to-play. If not, I suggest buying storage first from the shop, because that will probably be your most valuable purchase, since it gives you inventory slots on top of giving you um, a storage box that you can actually put items in, which free-to-play players won't have. So if you're going to put money in the game, buy storage first. And then, yeah, after that, you're good to spend shards on inventory if you need it. And that will be everything. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all the support. I have recently hit 2K subs, so...
thanks to all my League of Maidens viewers. You guys helped me get there, as well as the viewers for all the other games. But I just want to say thank you. And with that, you all have a great rest of your day. Good luck out there farming bosses. I can't wait to see what's in the update in a couple days, and I'll be sure to give you guys the news on that. And you boys and gals, take care, and I'll catch you tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.